Greetings, humans, and welcome to the Courier Publication Office. In this video, we're going to be going over everything that's in the newspaper template, how to add it to your project, how to get updates, and other considerations you might want to make to customize it to your own uh, project space. So, um, this object right here is the actual thing that comes with the template. It includes this 3D model. It's one collision object and a bunch of um, other pieces to make it look like a newspaper stand and a networked trigger that lets you pick up the newspaper. You can now actually disable networking on that trigger. If you want to have zero networked objects, it is possible to do and still have the courier um, in your space. You'll just keep a icon that says um, open newspaper floating on top of it until the player moves outside of the trigger. Um, so the courier has four pages. Um, we, oh, and one of them still says the courier. We just changed the name from hyphenated the courier to the courier, including uh, feature articles, editorial, horoscopes, and a Sudoku. The Sudoku is fully functional. You can click squares, enter numbers, um, check, and right now it does nothing. And if you get it correct, it only, the only thing it does out of the box is display something that says Sudoku complete on top of it so that players have feedback. Optionally, you can add three events. So you can add an event for when the player opens the newspaper, um, an event for when the player closes the newspaper, and um, one for when they successfully finish the Sudoku. So I'll go over that in a moment. Well, let's go over the objects first. So we've got the newspaper stand as this object. Like I said, there is the world geometry and one collision object, which is literally just a cube. Um, you can see it there. Um, so there's really no need to make this into a merge model, nor will that save you anything because the collision disabled objects won't go into that merge model. So the while it does actually go into your object count, it doesn't go into the collision complexity of the game. Um, and then the newspaper client is where the actual UI um, lives. And there are a total of, uh, well, four scripts here. We've got, this is the readme. It's gonna explain everything that I'm explaining in this video with um, some specific code examples and a place to generate new Sudokus uh, for the Sudoku string. Um, and then links to all the socials and places that you can go. Specifically, any questions you have, there is a now a courier channel on the Disastronautics Discord. Um, so requests and things, anything that can make this more modular to fit in any type of game is obviously the goal of the publication. So that feedback is super appreciated. Um, besides that, we have the newspaper stand server script. It literally does nothing besides signal to the UI to open and also um, disable the trigger once it's been used, if the trigger networking is preserved. And if not, it doesn't break anything. So that's great. The newspaper client um, essentially hooks up the three buttons. We've got the side to side buttons that allow you to change pages the and the exit button that allows you to close the newspaper. Um, it hooks all of that up and also sets it up so that um, the player can see their cursor and um, make it visible. When it closes, it turns that off. So if that is like a persistent mechanic in your game, that might be something that you need to check and keep on. Um, but for the most part in your normal core environment, um, you would want that turned off anytime someone closes a menu. So that's what's going on there. Um, and the page uh, count is, uh, the page advancing system is just based on however many pages there are. It's possible that they'd be out of order. I haven't seen it yet. Um, but what that means is that you can delete a page. So if, for example, the Sudoku, which we'll get to in a second, the Sudoku uses key bindings. If those key bindings are really disruptive in your game, you can actually just delete page four or delete any of these pages and it shouldn't break the system at all. Um, so that's basically the client script. And then finally we have the Sudoku script, um, which has a link again to the place that I use to generate Sudokus. It should work if you use, so it uses a Sudoku string. It should work if you use a space, a dot or a zero for the empty spaces and the string. I think all of those will work in populating the Sudoku. So if you wanted a harder one or something like that, you can actually just add that in um, as a custom property. Um, and then it has its own uh, validation system that is, um, so that's fine. And then the Sudoku script and client script have uh, custom properties called uh, broadcast when finished uh, Sudoku on the Sudoku. And then the newspaper stand client has...
is um, two properties, broadcast open and broadcast closed, which you should be able to check on and off. And I apparently need to add back into this template. Um, but essentially, they'll allow you to broadcast to the server when a player has opened the newspaper and when a player has closed the newspaper. And what you're going to want to do is use uh, this right here, events.connect for player on a server side script, player open newspaper, whichever one, and then the name of a function that you're going to use. All right, that's too large. Um, yeah, and then in that function, the first input should be the player. So that way, basically the client script will send the player information along with the event back to the server so you can do something specific for that player, however that works. One of the ways that you might do that is time how long it took them to complete the Sudoku and track that. Um, and then you could basically use the player opened newspaper event, save the time when it gets sent to the server and save the time for player finish Sudoku, subtract them and you should get the total time that you did it. So that's just one use case. You could do a lot of different things with but this allows you to connect it into your game without having to change the script. And it also allows you to disable that broadcast um, by, I will we'll update that. But like in this case, you can check this on if you want to broadcast, check it off, and then you'll get zero network broadcasted events. There's one network broadcasted event that sends from the trigger to the client. And there are two uh, client to client broadcasts, which are not part of your networking traffic that allow the newspaper to signal to the Sudoku that it's time to close itself and um, disconnect its key bindings. So um, that's what's in the newspaper. Um, and now we'll talk about adding it to your project. So we're gonna create a new project. Um, this is called newspaper, newspaper, paper test space. Um, and in community content, we're gonna search for newspaper, which should give us the coffee shop newspaper by disaster not, that's me. Um, and we'll import that into the project. So once I've imported the project, there's only one object, I can drag it in and I get this newspaper stand. Off the bat, should find that all of the controls are working normally. Um, you can press F to open the newspaper, X to close it. All of the controls should work out of the box. Um, if you want to update the newspaper and you haven't changed it from that, um, the newspaper will come out with new issues every two weeks. You can right click. So here I'm in project content. I went down to, for you, it'll be in imported content, not shared content. Right click the template and select download download latest, which will grab all of the changes that have been made to the template that have been pushed to community content and bring them into yours. Now, finally, what we're going to want to do is if for some reason this isn't, if anything was modified, I'm going to right click this template and select um, reset to template to get it back to the version that is current with the uh, latest community content. Now, if you've modified it, this process is going to be slightly different. So let's de-instance this. Um, and let's say I kept the trigger, but I deleted the newspaper stand model. So I just wanted, maybe I put it in a space, maybe it's actually a menu that's triggering it, which would be pretty easy to do. Um, and then I want to just get the latest UI updates. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to still update it the same way that I did before where, where I'll download latest. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this into the hierarchy in a separate place. Um, I'm going to open the client side and find this newspaper client UI container. That symbol's a UI container. Um, I'm gonna open up my, wherever I have that in my own project, drag this UI container into there. I should probably have renamed the old one before I did this, the instance and reparent. Um, and then, uh, so drag it in there. So the deinstance reparent is for the old one. I'm gonna delete the previous version of the UI and then delete the copy that I dragged in. And so that should add, wherever you're using the newspaper UI, add the latest version from the community content into your project. So that's how you would do that um, in both cases. So to see an example of the courier in the wild, check out Coffee Shop RPG. There's a link in the description of this video. So the courier in the coffee shop RPG is right as you walk in the door and you can find it here with the pickup newspaper. I'm using the network version of the trigger so that it doesn't display, but if you didn't disable networking, you would just have this pickup newspaper icon here. Um, and in my case, if you complete the Sudoku, it, that event triggers uh, something on the server to save that to a leaderboard. Um, and the quest system has a trigger for um, read the courier that is triggered by the player open newspaper event. So this is just one example of how it could work. Thank you very much for watching.
Subscribe to get more updates about the coffee shop as well as future community content to be used across all core games. And I will see you in the future.